everybody, this is me and in today's video I'm going to show you how to clean your tack because yesterday I took Casper to the beach and his tack is covered in salt water and sand which is really bad for leather so I'm going to show you how I clean it. Okay so you will need some warm water, some saddle soap so you need to make sure that it's actually designed for saddles and for leather don't just use your ordinary kitchen soap. And a sponge or if you prefer an old cloth or kitchen rag and an old towel for drying and you'll need some leather conditioner and of course your saddle so first I'm going to take off his saddle pad or half pad so I'm just going to undo the velcro and just slip it off so as you can see here, it's really dirty and dusty, especially under the flap here. So the first thing you want to do is just dampen your sponge and you want to squeeze out the majority of the water because you don't want it to be too wet and then just rub it on some soap and again give it a little squeeze out, you don't want it too soapy. So you just want to rub this all over your saddle, try and get rid of all the dirt and all the cracks and try and get rid of all the dust because I actually use quite a lot of water with my saddle usually because just because it gets so dusty So now I'm just going to use a bit more water on um, the girth straps on my saddle just because they are so dirty and sandy and salty so I'm going to have to use quite a lot on this just to get rid of all the sand and the dirt on here because my saddle is a close contact saddle the girth is actually not under the strap it's down here so it gets a lot dirtier a lot easier. I'll just use my towel and just dry it off. If your saddle isn't too dirty, then it's sometimes a good idea not to use saddle soap on the seat of the saddle just because it can sometimes be quite slippery. However, I used it today just because my tack was so dirty. <laughs> So one really good thing to do when you're cleaning your tack is always check your stitching. So I always check the stitching on my girth here because when you're riding you don't want one of your girth straps to snap because that would be really really bad. And of course you just want to dry everything off because you don't want your tack to go mouldy. So when your saddle is clean, I actually quite like to check to make sure that all the panelling is nice and smooth because Casper actually has a really sensitive back. So all the flocking inside, sometimes it can go up into a little ball which can be really uncomfortable because it can put a lot of pressure on him. So I just like to make sure that it feels really nice and smooth, there are no little bumps in there to cause him any discomfort and it's also really good to check that your tree isn't broken because if you do drop your saddle it can cause the saddle tree to break so that's all fine. So if it bends that is not a good thing unless you have a plastic tree. And lastly I'm going to put on some leather conditioner just undo the top. So I actually have a really old sponge here that I'm going to be using. So you just want a really thin layer, you don't want to put too much on, you don't want to coat it, especially on the seats, you don't want it to be too slippery. So sometimes I don't do that at all and sometimes I do. It really depends um, how slippery you are when you're riding and how balanced you are and if your saddle is really really dry then you might want to put a um, smooth little coating on but you really don't want to put too much on because you don't want to drown the leather. So 
when your saddle is all nice and clean, it's all dry and everything, you just want to put your saddle cover on to protect it so there's any dust in your tap room or if you accidentally drop it, it will stop it from hopefully scratching. And then it's all nice and done. So again, my girth is absolutely filthy from being on the beach yesterday. So I'm gonna have to use a lot of water to clean this off. And Casper's girth um, is actually synthetic, so it's not made of leather. So that means it doesn't need to be oiled like my saddle does. So now Casper's girth is clean, I'm just going to dry it off. And obviously you want to make sure that the buckles, because they're metal, are really clean um, and really dry because you don't want them to go rusty. And also again, it's really good to check for the stitching on them to make sure that they're not going to suddenly break off. So Casper's stirrups, again, like his girth, are really, really dirty, so I'm literally just going to have to dump them in the water to get all of this off, because it's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> And of course, you just want to dry these off. Unfortunately, I had to get my stirrup leathers quite wet. I could have taken them off, but they were just so sandy and salty that I decided to keep them on. And also, if you have, I have um, close contact stirrup leathers. However, if you have normal ones, I always find that the buckles, they get really, really stiff. So it's also really good also to oil your stirrup leathers or condition them because I find stirrup leathers get so, so, like, um, so dry really easily. So one thing you have to clean after every time you've ridden is to clean your bit. I would actually recommend cleaning your tack at least once a week. This is because you want to make sure that all the stitching isn't loose and you want it to be nice and comfy for your horse because you don't want the tack to be dirty or rub your horse. But obviously if you're riding a bitless bridle you've got less tack cleaning to do because you won't have to clean your bit every day. I'm just going to take the reins off just so they don't get in the way because my reins are actually synthetic so it doesn't matter if they get a lot more wet than the bridle with the leather does so I'm just taking them off to get them out of the way and again when you clean your bridle you just want to make sure that you don't put too much water on obviously I'm using a bit more water than you should just because it's covered in sand so it's quite difficult to get all the sand off but you just clean it the same as leather with your saddle really. So I always find, especially underneath the nose band, it gets really, really dirty here. So you just want to get rid of all the sort of sweat and dirt under there. <laughs> So if you wanted to full clean your bridle, I'd definitely recommend taking every single piece apart and putting it back together again. However, I do this about once a month, but then once a week, I will just clean it like this. It's also good to undo all the buckles when you do this, because if not, they can become really stiff. So just clean the buckles and everything. Check all the stitching as you go along. If you would find it useful for me to do a video on how to take apart a bridle and put it back together again, I can definitely do that, so comment down below if you'd like me to make that video. So now I'm just drying my bridle, getting it all nice and dry. I just did a really quick clean with it today because I'm in a little bit of a rush, but 
you guys see you want to make sure it's nice and dry. When I'm cleaning my bridle, I sometimes prefer to use a old rag just because it can get in all the nooks and crannies. So I'm just putting some leather conditioner on. So if you do have a new bridle, I would definitely recommend putting some oil on it just because they can get really, really dry when you first buy them. So I definitely recommend putting some neat split tooth oil on them. So I hope this video helped some of you or reminded that some of you need to clean your tack because it can be really dangerous if you go long periods of time without cleaning your tack because you always need to check the stitching to make sure that none of it's undone because if not it can cause a nasty accident. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any more video requests for my beginner series then comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!